Today for Mousetrap Monday, we're going to test out if this wooden box can help us catch more mice and rats. It's a pretty creative idea. I'm curious if it works. There's a lid that goes up and down on a hinge, and inside on the floor, we've attached a standard snap trap. Hopefully the mouse goes in there, sets off the trap, and gets caught. But if it doesn't, there's a string setting across there that holds up the lid. So when the trap goes off, the lid closes. That way, even if the trap doesn't catch the mouse, we'll still have it. Now this idea was first patented by Alvin Long of Long Ranch, California on June 2nd, 1981. And the trap I'm going to test out today, I recreated based on patent drawings. Now in the summary of the patent paperwork, the inventor claims that it's been found that one third of all mice that trip a conventional spring trap somehow escape the striker that's meant to kill them. A mouse that has escaped a trap is very hard to catch in the future. Well, these standard snap traps do work well, but anyone who's used them for a while knows occasionally a mouse escapes. You'll check it in the morning, it'll be set off, but no mouse. We'll see if this box idea solves the problem. My biggest concern is the string on the kill bar. That might slow it down and make it not as effective. But who knows, it might work. The way you set it is you pull back the arm, then the kill bar, and set it like a regular snap trap. Then we're gonna pull this string across. It's gonna sit right on the arm, so when it goes off, it will lift up. Then we pull down the lid of the box. The idea is the mouse will want the bait and go in the box. It might make it feel more secure. Then when it touches the pad, the lid will close, we got the mouse inside, and be stuck under the kill bar. Now I'm curious how well this works. We're gonna test it out on real mice in the barn. But first, I'm gonna build a larger version for rats. To start this project, you'll need to cut six pieces of wood to form a box, a top, bottom, and four sides. Then on the bottom of the board, we're gonna attach a heavy duty magnet. For this, I'm using a hole saw, but I'm not going all the way through the wood. You can chisel out the extra wood and place the magnet in the hole. To hold it in place, we're gonna attach the magnet with a screw. And now we're ready to secure the snap trap to the bottom board near the back of the box. For the larger rat trap, I'll be using two screws. With the magnet and trap in place, we're now ready to screw the four sides of the box together. And we're going to attach the sides to the bottom board with two hinges. Once they're secure, the sides will now swing on the bottom board. And on the bottom and the front side of the board, I'm going to attach some nails. That way the lid can be held down with the magnet. We're now ready to add the trigger for the box. It consists of a string and a stick that props up the edge. When the trap goes off, it hits the string, pulls the peg, and the lid comes slamming down. Now the final step is to attach a lid. At first I cut a piece of wood for the lid, but the problem is with the solid lid you can't see inside. So instead of using a solid piece of wood, I decided to change it out for a see-through plastic lid. You just screw it down to the box and now you can see inside. Our larger version for catching the rats is now complete. That magnet down there makes it very hard to open the lid, which is good for keeping the rats from escaping. I'm gonna pry that apart flip it over and set the trap. Now we can close the lid and prop it up with our stick. The rat will want the bait, go in there, touch the pad. There's no escaping this trap. I wanna see how well it works on real mice and rats. Let's start with the rat version. So let's see if they'll go inside, touch the pad and get caught.
When I went to go check the trap this morning, I saw the lid was down and looking inside, it worked perfectly. There's a great big rat caught in the trap right on the neck. So having the string across the kill bar didn't slow it down at all. But even if we didn't catch the rat in the trap, it would still be caught in the box with the magnet holding it closed. So the rat version works. Let's go test out the mouse version. We'll go set up the motion cameras in the barn and see if we can catch a mouse. Now for most of my traps, I use peanut butter as bait. But tonight, I'm gonna try something new, Nutella. See if the chocolate and hazelnut bring the mice in. We'll go ahead and set the trap. All right, we'll set up the motion cameras and see if we catch a mouse tonight. Well, I guess Nutella does make a good mousetrap bait. Last night, we set up the smaller version in the barn and two mice came along. The first one checked it out a while, but didn't get caught. But then a second mouse came, it had a large botfly parasite, it stepped on the trigger and got killed in the trap, and the lid came down. So both the mouse and rat version work quite well. Now I don't want the mouse and rat we caught to go to waste, so I'm gonna feed them to wild animals in the backyard. Let's go set up the motion cameras and see what comes along and has a mouse and rat snack. Well, it's been a while since I caught a gray fox on my trail camera, but it looks like they're back. It was pretty foggy that night, but it came along, found the rat, and took it away. Last year, that gray fox was peeing on my kid's shoes on the porch, so I'm going to have to watch him. The next night, it was much more clear, and a skunk came and ate the mouse. It was pretty funny because a black-tailed deer came down the trail, and the skunk acted like it was going to spray the deer. That's a really cool wildlife interaction. But overall, I'm really happy with this trap design. It works well, you're gonna catch more mice. You are gonna have to replace the trap every once in a while and it does get a little dirty. The other one's covered in blood. So you just unscrew the trap, add a new one, and you continue using the box. What a great idea. Now in my last couple videos, I didn't do question and answer time and that's because I've been on vacation. My family and I went over to Maui. We had a great time. We enjoyed the warm weather, playing on the beach, swimming in the pool. We stayed at a pretty nice resort and relaxed. We got to celebrate my oldest son's birthday 
at the old Lahaina Luau. It was really fun. And the kids got to go trick-or-treating in warm weather. And along with spending time with my family, my favorite part was the food. Oh, Hawaiian food is amazing. The fish, the pork, the rice, oh, I just love it. And the desserts are to die for. Now I did bring a few mouse traps and trail cameras on the trip to see if I could catch any mice or rats in Hawaii. But we stayed at a fancy resort and they don't tolerate any rodents. They put poison around. So once I saw the base stations, I knew we weren't getting a video. But there were a lot of invasive species, especially birds. Most of the birds I saw were not from Hawaii. They were brought in from other places, but they're still cool to see. So a vacation with my family was just what I needed. YouTube was getting pretty stressful, especially since right before I left, someone stole my trail cameras. I asked viewers to give recommendations and I got a lot of responses. And the all time best trail camera I ever found was suggested by several YouTube viewers. It's this. The Exodus Lift 2. This is an amazing trail camera. It's a game changer for me. And that's because they don't limit the time that you film at night. So I'm gonna do a full review on this trail camera, but thanks for the recommendations. This is the perfect camera for what I need it for. It's a really amazing product. I liked it so much, once I got one, I immediately bought a second one. So I'm still getting caught up on my videos. I have some really good ones coming. A nail gun rat trap and a bacon fat rat trap. But those videos need a little more work. They're not quite ready. So watch for them coming soon. And I'll try to get back to question and answer time in the next video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider clicking the button right here. I've posted over 500 videos on YouTube and currently I'm posting new videos every Monday. So if you want to see the best videos on how to catch mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, stay tuned.